All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble this Lenovo IdeaPad Flex 5 14 ABR8. All right, so we're going to be using a T5 screwdriver, it looks like. Okay, and let's go ahead and get that. It's kind of hard to read this label, but uh, yeah. All right, let's go ahead and remove all the T5 screws. You want to keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern and I remove them. Okay, so we got three going along the back where the hinge, two here, and then four along the front. And we're just gonna put that them in that pattern. All right, let's go ahead and remove all these screws. If this video helps you out, please make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. If you can't, um, it'd be helpful as well if you could watch a few of my other videos and then um, comment on them because the YouTube algorithm likes to see that. Also, I, I'm splitting off my channel with for my reviews and everything um, onto another channel. So if you like the review videos and things like that, um, please go subscribe to that channel as well. So far, um, as the channel's somewhat growing, um, I'm going to be kind of duplicating posts uh, between this channel and that one, but eventually I'm going to drop off those videos from this channel and then put them uh, just on that new channel. All right, looks like this computer turns itself on. I kind of hate that feature on these new Lenovo's. So I'm going to, let me shut it down first because it's going to be popping up to the customer's login screen. So let me wait till it's on. All right. Then we'll shut this down. All right. So now that we got the screws out, we're going to pop the bottom cover off. Okay. Usually the way you do that is you kind of get your fingernails or a pry tool in the little gap between the palm rest and the bottom cover. So usually I'll get in with my fingernails here. All right. In this case, I'll open it up more and I'll push on the palm rest. Don't push on the touchpad because you don't want to shove that into the computer. Um, but we're going to go ahead and pull like that. Okay just like this, and we're gonna work our way over. Again, go over to the uh, palm rest and push on that while you pull on the bottom. All right, just like that. Work your way around the sides. You can see we already got that popped open quite a bit. So now that we got that, we're gonna close it. I'm gonna get underneath the bottom cover, all right? And we're just gonna go ahead and pull that up. And then while we're doing that, I'm gonna slide my fingernail around the edges just like this. Okay, you can see how easy it pops up. Same thing, go around to the other side and pop that up. All right, there you go. And then we're just gonna work our way around the edges here. Same thing, there's a little gap there. You can go ahead and work your fingernail or pry tool in there. And there you go, pop that out. So you can see that's what the bottom of the cover looks like. Very simple to remove, very nice and easy. All right, the customer is upgrading this to a four terabyte SSD. So I actually cloned the hard drive or the original SSD to a new SSD. Um, you can see the battery in here, it, the model number's right there, L21C3PE0, all right? So if you need to replace the battery, there's that. The connector is one of those where you have to kind of grab the cables and kind of just wiggle it side to side to pull it out. Um, a little bit tough, but uh, there's one screw here, and then there's another screw down here, and I think, oh, one more screw down there. So three screws holding this battery into place, okay? I'm not gonna take it out, but I'm just gonna show you what's going on. There's the wireless antenna here and another one here. The wires go underneath here, and then go up this way and connect to the wireless card here. Here's the wireless card, if for some reason you need that information there, okay? All right, <clears throat> then you got the keyboard connector here. All right, you got this cable I.O. board connector here for the two USB ports, the SD card slot, as well as the power button. All right, there's a one key recovery button right there. So if you need to get to the BIOS or boot menu or something like that, you can use a little pin to push that when the computer's off and it will let you um, boot into one key recovery mode. All right, that lets you do recovery. It lets you go to the BIOS, lets you go to other BIOS options, things like that. Okay. Next, uh, you got the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD slot here. We're gonna be removing that. Let me actually um, get a thumbnail. So I'm gonna put this lined up in the center and I'll get a thumbnail here, okay? All right. 
And then next, maybe I should take out the battery just so we can see what these two connectors are under here. Um, it looks like touchpad and then some other connector. Um, we are going to switch over to a JIS-1 screwdriver to remove the screws here. Okay, again, there are three screws. All right, so we'll remove these three screws. There's also a Lenovo, like, tamper sticker there or warranty sticker. That's not supposed to void the warranty depending where you live. Some places, they're not allowed to void the warranty if you remove that. Okay, but uh, anyways, let's go ahead and lift the battery up. You can see it lifts up like this. And usually what I do is I get my finger underneath to the connector there and I'll pinch on the top and the bottom and I'll wiggle it side to side as I kind of pull and there you go it pops out so basically just wiggle the connector like that as I pull and there we go that's what the battery looks like this computer I believe customer said is completely brand new and they just bought it um, to replace another Here you can see the um, fingerprint sensor there with the cable that goes right there and then like I said touchpad connectors here it goes underneath the keyboard cable there. This is the keyboard backlight connector. CPU is soldered to the motherboard. You can't upgrade it unless you have some special tools and stuff. But if you know, if you have those tools, you probably know how to do that. All right, so I don't need to explain it. All right, you got this cable here and this cable here. Most likely this is the LCD LVDS connector. If you're gonna mess with this or the screen or anything, you do want to disconnect the battery, open up the laptop, and then press and hold the power button on the side for at least 15 seconds before messing with this cable. Um, if you don't, there's a really good chance that you're gonna fry the backlight circuit, so be very careful with that. Then you got this connector here, which is most likely for like touchscreen. Sometimes it's for the microphone or the um, webcam, so yeah. Um, on this model, RAM is soldered to the motherboard. I'm assuming it's underneath here, but uh, I'm not gonna peel that stuff up. All right, so not much else. You got the speaker connector there. Obviously, if you pull that, um, and then the speaker's connected to the other speaker here. Here you can see how the wireless antennas look underneath with this copper thing. That's how most of them do it. And yeah, all right, let's go ahead and change the SSD out now. Again, I did clone it to another one in advance. Uh, there are two screws holding this thing down. Most likely this middle plate we're going to get rid of, <clears throat> but let's see. Okay, so we removed those two screws, and it seems to be stuck here. Um, we're going to lift it up slightly, and then we're going to kind of pull it. There we go. And it's stuck because the SSD is mounted here. So we're going to go ahead and undo this screw, and it looks like... This screw is held to this metal plate with a little plasticky washer thing. So most likely we're going to use this to mount the SSD onto the um, motherboard. Okay, so we'll set this aside. You can see they use this smaller Samsung SSD. Um, yeah, usually these aftermarket Samsung SSDs aren't too good. So it's always a good idea to upgrade or replace them. All right, anyways, I got this that I used to clone the SSD. So we're going to pop that out. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and slide the new SSD into here. All right, there's a customer brought this Crucial P3 Plus uh, 4 terabyte SSD. So we're going to drop that in, and you can see it just sits right there. Okay, and then we'll just get this screw and tighten that down to hold the SSD in place. Okay, I don't know why, but I always see the SSDs that have these thermal pads failing, so I don't know if they just run hotter or what's going on, but for some reason they always fail more often than the other kinds. I'm going to put this SSD in, or this screw back in here, um, since it's not being used, and then I'll probably just give this to the customer and see what they want to do with it, but really there's not really a use for this. Okay, um, this tray is pretty much now... Um, garbage because usually if you're gonna put an SSD you're gonna use one of these full-sized ones okay so let's go ahead now and put this thing back together and we should be good to go hopefully the clone worked out well I did have to disable BitLocker first um, the device encryption and I also had to turn off secure boot to let me boot my bootable software to clone on boot um, though there are ways to do cloning without having to boot okay Anyways, we're going to get this in, get that in, and then we're going to pinch, I'm going to pinch the two connectors together, just like that, so that way the stress isn't all in one direction. Okay, line this all up, it has little raised tabs that stick up, 
and then we'll get these screws back in and that's pretty much all there is to it let's get this in and we'll power it up again hopefully this video helped you guys out if it did please like subscribe comment share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well and if it helped you save a bunch of money please consider contributing a little to the channel uh, every little bit helps and does help me make continue making these videos for a living um, and then if you can't, I am making another channel as well, but it'll help if you um, watch a few of my other videos, like, comment, subscribe on those, and subscribe to my new channel, um, which is going to be mostly my review videos. I'm going to split them off because um, I've had people like saying, why are there all these review videos on my uh, repair channel, although this is repairs and reviews, <laughs> so I'm going to eventually change the name once I swap it, or maybe not, because I'm not going to delete all the current review videos that are on here, so I'll probably just leave that channel name alone, and then just make a reviews and more channel uh, for the future, okay? So anyways, we got all of that snapped back together, we're going to switch back over to the T5 Torx 5 screwdriver, get all those screws back in, and then we'll power it up and make sure everything's working. Yeah, other than that, that's pretty much all there is to it. All right, let's get all these screws back in. Okay. All right. Pretty easy to open, pretty easy to work on. Hopefully on this model they repaired or they uh, fixed the hinge issue that was happening on a lot of these laptops. Alright, this one, they changed the design. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's go ahead and power it on. Alright, flip this over, power it up. I might have to plug it in for it to power it up because it's not doing anything right now. So let's plug the charger in real quick here. Okay. And the keyboard is lighting up. I believe the battery also acts as the CMOS BIOS real-time clock RTC battery. So keep that in mind if for some reason um, the date and time is getting screwed up or other things, it could be that battery's not holding a good charge. As you can see it's powering on I see this power light or the caps lock light is on um, sometimes after taking things apart removing the battery because the BIOS was reset it's gonna power cycle and I just saw the Lenovo thing but then it disappeared so yeah usually it will power cycle and then it will be resetting the BIOS so hopefully yep there you go oh it's doing automatic repair probably because the SSD is new and it doesn't know what's there but uh, other than that, that should be all there is to it. Hopefully it's going to... Oh, I might have to turn Secure Boot back on before it continues to work. Um, usually you can press F12 on boot if it doesn't let you change the boot device using that. Um, let's see here. Advanced options. Continue. Is it going to start or am I going to have to go into the BIOS? Um, then you can use like a sim card tool or something to push the one key recovery button there let's see if it's going to start up or if i'm going to have to do something to it and i'm thinking it's starting to look like i'm going to have to do something to it yeah all right yep it's taking a while Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to power it off. Um, let's do the restart option and then we're just going to shut it off. And hopefully, let's see here, it's going to start up. Okay, so I turned it off once the Lenovo thing came on. We're going to push the one key recovery button here with a pin. And hopefully after turning on the um, secure boot and stuff, it's going to work. So we're going to go into BIOS setup. 
then we're going to go to configuration we're going to go all the way down here to where is it is it on this one is it in security okay it's in security enable secure boot and hopefully that will fix it okay so we're going to exit saving changes yes and hopefully that will get it to boot up right because otherwise we might have to do a clean install we'll see what happens it's still preparing automatic repair so yeah this might need like a clean install or something um, I'm gonna have to check with the customer see what they want to do I'll try cloning it over one more time but the opposite way from their SSD over and see if that works let's try advanced options and try troubleshooting advanced options sometimes going to like startup settings and going into safe mode will somehow fix it um, but yeah we'll see let's try it let's see if it will even give me the safe mode startup options Just giving the options we'll push four to go to safe mode and it looks like it's doing something yeah so interesting it did go so let's go ahead and restart now and hopefully it will boot normally I don't know why Windows does that a lot of times it's kind of weird Is it starting up? And there we go. See, so for some reason, putting it into safe mode and starting up one time fixes the boot issue. I'm not too sure why that is. It does that sometimes, not all the time. I don't know. It's just something weird with Microsoft. All right, and the date and time, the date looks right, but the time got reset. Um, went a few hours backwards. But uh, yeah, other than that, that's all there is to it. So we're going to shut this down and we should be good to go. Thanks for watching. Again, hopefully this video helped. Hopefully that added bit of booting it up helped um, with you if, if you were having issues booting yours up. But um, yeah, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.